welcome and thank you for spending some of your time with us. My name is Tina Rosenquist and this is Knowledge for Wellness. And this show is to better inform you because when you know more, you are empowered to make better decisions for yourself and your loved ones for a better quality of life. And knowledge is power. And today's topic is on chiropractic for everybody. And I'm delighted to present Dr. Annie Seafelt from several different locations throughout the Twin City area. Now, questions we'll be asking are, is animal chiropractic just for animal athletes like racehorses or agility dogs? Or what kind of conditions can chiropractic help? And what does it do for things like arthritis and hip dysplasia? Welcome, Dr. Annie. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And of course, Ken and Dan. Pleasure and to be here. Thank you. And our guest of honor, Oliver and Max as well. Now, we'll be showing, of course, my viewers not only a demonstration right. with right. actually how you work with the animals, mm -hmm. but also I understand that these gentlemen have a testimony to give as well. Yes. So that's yes. great. Well, this is your first time on Knowledge for Wellness and that we know that you graduated at Northwestern College of Chiropractic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we'd like for you to tell our viewers a little bit of why you went into this profession. As Absolutely. Well. I'm happy to answer that question. Thank you. I often get asked, uh, what made you decide to work on animals? People yes. assume that I wanted to be a human chiropractor and that animals was, was kind of an add-on. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, it was actually the other way around. Oh. Uh, I, uh, um, I was incredibly inspired when I saw my dog get adjusted. Oh, okay. I had a 12-year-old dog who uh, uh, had a chronic respiratory issue. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, I was seeing a chiropractor who had explained to me that chiropractic is for, is for joint pain, mm -hmm. it's for back pain, it's for neck pain, but really chiropractic tunes us into the central nervous system and supports every function of the body. Yes. So this was a dog who had had a respiratory issue that nothing seemed to be helping. Mm -hmm. uh, our very, very capable veterinarian wasn't able to get a handle on it and just nothing was quite working. Uh, so I asked that chiropractor after she educated me about what chiropractic does, do you think you could adjust my dog? Sure. Would it help her? She has a spine. She has a central <laughs> nervous system. Yes. Uh, so um, the it, back back in those days, it was not legal in Minnesota oh, for chiropractors okay. to work on animals, mm -hmm. but it was legal for animals to be adjusted in Wisconsin okay. uh, by qualified doctors. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but seeing what happened to my dog after she was adjusted just once mm -hmm. changed my life completely. Yes. And that's when I decided that I wanted to be a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so you actually went to school in Wisconsin as well. I did. Yeah. My, my training for animals was in Sturdivant, Wisconsin mm -hmm. uh, at the Healing Oasis. And I've taken both the uh, basic animal chiropractic program there and the advanced veterinary neurology program. Oh, very nice. Very nice. And we want to talk about you opening up your own clinic. You are the first known in Minnesota uh, yes. working with animals. Congratulations on that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So it kind of led into opening up one in Minnesota. Right. Mm -hmm. the, uh, um, when I was in chiropractic school, uh, I, I realized that adjusting animals in Minnesota was, it was not yet legal. Right. Uh, but I thought it's, it's, it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's going to change. It has to change. Yes. It's the right thing to do. Uh, but what we learned along the way was when you change laws, even if they're excellent ideas, it's a real process. Yes. So it took us a number of years uh, mm -hmm. to get the law changed that allows uh, uh, chiropractors, especially qualified chiropractors, to work on animals in Minnesota. Right. So, and I am I'm very very honored that my registration number is 001. <laughs> yes. Very nice. So. So you're actually the founder for those who want to follow, because I haven't heard much about chiropractics for animals at all. And when I met you, it was just like, oh my gosh, we have to have you on the show because. You know, as the owner of a golden retriever, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they also have bad, they're known for their hips. Right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. having issues. And right. we only did the traditional, went to the vet and put the dog on, you know, muscle relaxers. Sure. You know, sure. and had we have known about you then, it would have changed his life as well. So now, of course, Oliver, he is a dog that is actually blind. Yes. yes. So let's kind of walk through how that could help a dog that is blind as well. The, uh, one of the things that chiropractic does, or I should say the, the basic thing that chiropractic does, is 
removes any interference between the central nervous system and the body. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an enormous amount of information that is transmitted from the body to the brain about how the body is moving. Mm -hmm. y the brain needs that information. Right. With, and when that information is lacking, there's just, there's a, well, there's a, a lot of information that's supposed to be there that's not. Mm -hmm. Depressed input to the brain leads to depressed output. Now, Oliver is such a, a wonderful, shining example of how chiropractic has helped him because he doesn't have visual input. Right. Uh, he's been, uh, he's been non-visual since 2007. Okay. He's 13 years old now. And uh, when we adjusted Oliver, and I'll let, I'll let Ken and Dan uh, speak a little bit to, mm -hmm. to how that went. But, um, but Oliver's a really good example because once we got him better in touch with uh, how his body was moving through space, even without the visual information, his life changed. Oh, so, very nice. Okay. Yeah. So you, you want to walk us through how it actually changed, uh, well, not only Oliver's life, but you as the owner of Oliver as well. Yeah. Well, we uh, went to see Dr. Annie uh, almost a year ago. We were planning a, a vacation up to Madeline Island. Okay. And we were very concerned because um, Oliver was having trouble um, getting up. He was uh, not negotiating steps very well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and a friend of mine had told me about uh, seeing Dr. Annie with her poodle. And I was um, uh, amazed uh, to hear that uh, dogs um, could be treated for chiropractic. Mm -hmm. And yes. I made an appointment immediately, yeah. and I went in to see Annie. And I think she adjusted Oliver once or twice before we went on this trip. Mm -hmm. And we just had a great time. Yeah. So the trip went well. There were a lot of steps, and Oliver negotiated them uh, uh, wonderfully. Mm -hmm. and, um, and he's done really well with the treatment. Uh, Dr. Annie suggested that he lose some weight. We put him on a diet. He's lost about 14 pounds, mm -hmm. and um, he's well. doing doing quite well. He's he's um, um, uh, over 13 years old. He's slowing down a little bit, but yes. still very interested in food and goes on two walks a day, mm, nice. and um, and he's been doing great. So you actually saw the change within that same day after that treatment with Dr. Annie, or did he sleep on with, it? And within see a few you days. Within okay. a few days, mm -hmm. it was it was quite mm -hmm. remarkable. Yes. And we were very happy. Very, very nice. And of course, we also, you work with Max. Max is a client too, oh, <laughs> patient. <nice. Okay. laughs> and, uh, yes. He's benefited as well. Okay. And it's interesting to get the progress reports from one visit to the next because you, you see what's happened mm -hmm. and you monitor mm -hmm. uh, what's happened to him. It's, it's nice. It's nice to see that things hold. Good, good. Now, this, of course, these dogs are not dogs that actually show or anything like that. So they're pretty much, you know, your favorite animal and, of course, right. you know, your child, as we say. They, and they refer to us as management. I'm sorry? <laughs> they refer to us as management. Oh, okay. Yeah, good to know. That. <laughs> and, of course, you know, you loving these dogs as much as you do and, you know, wanting the best for them and to be aware that uh, an animal chiropractor can actually help. Now, we also have a demonstration that mm -hmm. you want to show, but we want to warn our viewers that your hands know the difference between, you know, the actual real spine and what's wrong. So we don't want them to try this at home. Right, right. So it's a powerful modality, but it should be in trained hands. Yeah, Absolutely. Exactly. So okay. we understand a chiropractor's hands are like those of a pianist, mm -hmm. and you understand mm -hmm. the actual spine as well. So Certainly. yeah, let's go ahead and show that demonstration if you could. Okay, great. So I'll get down here with Oliver. Mm -hmm. Back up, Oliver. He usually does what Dr. Annie, he's well behaved with him, <laughs> oh, there, more than a there little are some, There are some cookies involved over yes. there. So, oh, okay. so what we're going to do is we're going to get Oliver to back up just Oliver, a bit. Back up. back up, back up. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. There we are. So the, um, the way we work on the spine is first we do the assessment. Okay. Uh, and we do that, of course, in a, in a segmental nature because that's how the spine is. Yes. The, uh, um, the area back here where Oliver does have a restriction, uh, oftentimes when I'm working with animals that are dealing with incontinence, incontinence is a huge issue, especially in older animals, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, adjustments back here can help, can help the animal hold uh, the bladder to make it outside to go to the bathroom. And oftentimes, you know, until you're experiencing that, uh, it's, it's difficult to understand that that can often uh, shorten an animal's life. If it's if the uh, if the family isn't able to uh, manage 
uh, toileting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's one very, very, very important thing that we can do with chiropractic. Now, Oliver wasn't having that issue. Can you uh, just kind of fill me in on the last time I saw Oliver was in March. So if you could just sort of fill me in on how he's been doing since then, that would be wonderful. Uh, he's actually been doing uh, pretty good. Um, his mobility is good. He's, as I said earlier, he's going on two walks a day. Okay. Uh, he's, he's slowed down a little bit, the duration of the walks, and, um, you know, he's getting, you know, over 13, so he's slowed mm -hmm. down, but he still has a lot of energy. Okay. And, uh, and he's doing pretty good. Wonderful. And probably losing that weight as well, not having to carry that probably helped a lot. Of oh, yeah, I think it was a, a great help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a really good, uh, that's a good education piece because a lot of us, we're trained that dogs should be heavier yeah. than they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it's a good thing to really learn what's the healthy weight for your companion mm -hmm. and help them get there. The loving them with treats uh, is when they, when they get older, it can be very hard on their joints. Yes. So. So we've done three adjustments on Oliver so far. We've done one here in the sacrum, mm -hmm. uh, one in the lumbar spine, one here in the thoracic spine. Okay. And the, the way that the body is set up, the, the spinal nerves are very, very segmental. So in a general sense, when you're getting a full spinal adjustment, you're getting a full body tune-up. The uh, back here, as I said, uh, it's a lot about bladder and mm -hmm. bowel. Right. Right here in the lumbar spine, it deals a lot with the strength in the rear limbs. Mm -hmm. Right up through here, it can be digestion, it can be heart and lungs, uh, and then as we get up through this area, it's more the front limbs. And actually, I'm going to reposition Oliver so I can get a good, a good angle on what we're doing here. Okay. There we go, buddy. Yeah. Good boy, Oliver. And then if, Dan, can I have you maybe hold his head up just a bit? There's a boy. And then the all-important atlas, the very first vertebra here. Okay. The, uh, that's right kind of the, here. if that one's not happy, nobody's happy. Oh, okay. So that one is very important to make sure that that one's moving. There's an awful lot of information that goes into the central nervous system from that area. And when that's lacking, uh, it can, the animal can seem depressed. I mean, there's enough information that's missing that the animal can actually seem depressed. We're actually done with the adjustment. Good boy. Wow, good boy, Oliver. Boy, Oliver. And he didn't yell for hurt at all. Oh no, so no. That's really right. You know, to reassure the viewers that you know if they're thinking about going and seeing a chiropractor, or animal chiropractor, you know that there was no you know hurting of the animal at all. Right, you know? right. No, it's very it's very gentle. Mm -hmm. The uh, uh, people expect to hear kind of a pop or a crack sure. uh, like they do sometimes with humans. Mm -hmm. You don't hear that with the animals. Okay. Yeah. Well, with this situation with Oliver uh, and how you, he came to you, he doesn't come every week, correct? He actually no. comes, let's say, um, when you first start out. Why don't you walk us through, let's say, your first initial visit with an animal? The, uh, the first time I see an animal, mm -hmm. we usually check in with that animal again within one or two weeks after the first visit. Okay. Just to see how the animals holding the adjustments that we made, uh, uh, what do the owners have to report as far as they, you know, when, whenever they come in there's always some concern. Yes. So we want to know how are they doing regarding that concern. Mm -hmm. uh, so we get that check in at the one or two week mark. Mm -hmm. uh, based on how the animal is doing, my goal is always to move appointments as far apart as we possibly can sure. and still support the animal. Mm -hmm. my, uh, what I see as a maintenance uh, interval is anything up to th every three months. Okay. So some animals I see every few months. Mm -hmm. uh, some animals that are agility animals or uh, athletes, yes. uh, I'll see them as their, their workload increases. Okay. Uh, in Oliver's example, we wanted to get a couple of appointments in before you went on your trip so right. that yes. you could enjoy it um, to, its, to its utmost, which you did. Yes. Uh, but the, we, we are constantly trying to push those appointments further and further apart mm -hmm. so that it's something sustainable. Yes. That's the important piece is that it's sustainable over time. Okay, well that's nice to know. Sometimes I'll book appointments with Dr. Annie after he's been to the groomers. So oh. that way, because that can be very um, tiring for, for an older dog sure. to be there um, that's a, for several hours. That's mm -hmm. a very good point. That's it, that can be stressful on them. Sure. So after the groomers or after an anesthesia, that's the other piece too. When an animal oh. is under anesthesia, uh, it's a very good idea to have them checked chiropractically afterwards just to make sure that everything is, is in, in alignment because they're not protecting their bodies as they normally would right. uh, when, they're, when they're under. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. 
And I also saw that you work with dogs that are, you call them athletes, yes. dogs. Yes. And to do an adjustment maybe prior to their showing. Right. So they're at their peak performance. Right. Yes. And we, we do it enough ahead of time so that the changes that we've made have time to integrate. Mm -hmm. I would never adjust an animal and send them straight off into an event yes. uh, because they need to get used to the fact that their body's acting just a little bit differently, yeah. more efficiently. Yes. But um, those animals are going at top speed and giving their top effort all the yeah. time. And that the adjusting can change uh, uh, what that results in, yeah. so in a good way. Yes, uh, nice. yeah. And of course, Max. Let's hear the story about Max as well. <laughs> well, Max is just getting old, getting to be an older dog. Okay. So we mm -hmm. just thought that it would, might be wise, and he's very active. He we call him a natural athlete. Oh, okay. He he can um, catch a ball on the you know first bounce. He's he's always right there with it, but he loves to play. So we mm -hmm. thought that it would be a good choice to have him examined by Dr. Annie. So. Oh, okay. Dan, you mentioned that you took Max in because he was getting older, but how would I know to take my animal in to see a chiropractor? Well, with Oliver initially going in, mm -hmm. um, Oliver had horrible mornings. He was stiff and he, he would actually cry in the morning. Oh. He just would be, um, from a night's sleep, he really struggled to get up. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to do something, and, and uh, again, our friend telling us about Dr. Annie was, is, is, was the way to go, it seemed. Sure. You know, Oliver has a, a whole cadre of doctors. He has a veterinary uh, dental dentist he goes to see. He has a veterinary ophthalmologist, so why not a veterinary yeah. chiropractor? <laughs> so it seemed, it wasn't foreign to us. It seemed like a great idea. Yes. And um, we have a knowledgeable friend that we trust her advice, so. Great, very nice. And we, and actually we, we thought it would probably be preventative for Max before we have problems. Oh, sure. To just have Dr. Annie uh, check him out. Mm -hmm. Max has a big job to do, yes, yeah. assisting Oscar yeah. as yes. a, <laughs> his visual, visual assistant. Well, and these, we like, you know, like human beings, we need to stay active to stay mm -hmm. young. We've got to keep moving. And mm -hmm. We'd like to keep Oliver moving mm -hmm. as yes. long as we can. Yes, so. the body's definitely built to move, and yeah. that's, that's what we support. The, the, the question of how do you know when you bring your animal to a chiropractor, is it's an interesting one yes. but, because it, it can really be anything. It's, uh, I work with the canine athletes. Oh, okay. Uh, they're coming in because they're athletes, because of the activities that they do. Sure. But any other change that someone sees in, in their animal, dog or cat, mm -hmm. in, from my perspective, some of my colleagues also work with horses. Yes. But if a person has seen something change, uh, the cat isn't using the litter box. It's, it's, it's going elsewhere in the house where it never used to do that. Sure. It's not jumping up to its favorite perch anymore. Okay. Uh, the dog isn't jumping on the bed anymore. It's having trouble getting into the car. Mm -hmm. uh, even sometimes appetite. Uh, changes in behavior. Uh, it can be a dog who uh, was uh, not aggressive that is starting to become a uh, bit fearful aggressive. Sure. Uh, that can be a pain issue. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's any change uh, is, is worthy of checking out with your veterinarian yes. but also with chiropractic. Okay, so that brings the next question that I'm thinking, of course, is that you have to have a referral from the veterinarian right. before they come and see you. So right. Yeah. If you could elaborate on that as well. Absolutely. I, I do get questions about that. The, uh, the way that the law passed in Minnesota in 2008 was in order for an owner to bring uh, an animal to see an, an animal chiropractor, mm -hmm. uh, that animal chiropractor needs a referral from the animal's veterinarian first. Okay. The, uh, and it's just it's, it's part of the way the law passed. When, 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 all, that, when all that gets uh, put into place, it's always a big uh, process. Well, very and that similar was, to, let's say, a doctor giving a referral to a physical therapist. Right, mm -hmm. right. It is. It yeah. is. Yes, and and that's how it. That's how it uh, came about. Was it was a similar process, and really, what it, it what uh, the spirit of that. Uh, was making sure that the animal does have a veterinarian, oh, okay. that, that, um, that there, there's a veterinarian in the mix somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and what it has been, it's been an absolute blessing because it is, it's an extra step when an owner wants to bring an animal to see me. Mm -hmm. We can't just make an appointment. We have to get that referral from the veterinarian. But it's a fairly simple process. You folks have been through yes. it twice. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, um, most veterinarians are more than happy to provide the referral. They're happy that, that chiropractors are out there as resources. Yes. Um, but the wonderful part is it builds a bridge between the practitioners. So now Oliver and Max have a team working for them rather than two doctors working uh, in, a, in isolation. Mm -hmm. And when I'm done working with the animal, uh, I provide the notes to the 
owners, mm -hmm. uh, but I also send a copy to the animal's veterinarian so oh. that they're on board with what's changing, how mm -hmm. is it changing, uh, what, what are we doing, so they're not referring off into, into oblivion, they're mm -hmm. getting feedback. Right. And that's holding not only you accountable, but also the veterinarian as well. Sure, too. sure, absolutely. So, yeah. Now, after the treatment, and it seemed to only take a few minutes. Here, yes, yes, which it's was, very brief. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, do they feel sore afterwards? I mean, it's hard for them to tell us, but in your experience with your animal, you know, how do they act right after? I think they act, they act just fine. They don't, mm. it doesn't, it's, it's um, uh, more subtle that you notice over, um, you know, maybe the next day or later that day, and mm -hmm. you just notice that, that, um, we start with Oliver. He he was doing much better right away. Okay. But, yeah. Yeah. We take into consideration the condition of the animal as it's coming in. If sure. the animal is neurologically very compromised, mm -hmm. or if it's quite old, uh, the uh, um, we we do kind of a less is more approach with the adjusting. I don't go in and adjust every subluxation that I find with an animal in that condition mm -hmm. because I want to avoid that soreness. I want to avoid them having the next day of feeling just overwhelmed by the changes that occurred. Sure. The, uh, um, occasionally we do have a little bit of muscular soreness because muscles that weren't doing their job <laughs> now are. Yes. Um, it's sort of an after the workout kind of a soreness. Mm -hmm. uh, that does occur but we do, we do uh, put those um, processes into place in order to try and minimize that for the animal and just kind of bring them up, sometimes bring them up slowly. Yeah, because from going overnight into just performing to 100%, mm -hmm. you know, to give them a little bit of time of, oh, I can move that paw a little bit better. Right, you know? right, and it's then, listening again. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you know, it's doing what I want. Yes, know, the mind yes. is connecting with, mm -hmm. you know, going through the spine and such. Yeah. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Cool. And we, of course, want to talk a little bit about other areas of chiropractic, animal chiropractic. Now, you mentioned animal chiropractic. You were the first founder in Minnesota for dogs and cats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there's also those that are working with horses as yes, well. Yes, so yes. So we want to... There, there are a number of my colleagues uh, work with dogs, cats, and horses. Yes. Uh, I do have some colleagues who work strictly with horses. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's basically... I think your work, when, when you're following your heart, your work finds you, yeah. most definitely. Yes. Uh, and I do believe that these, these people have followed their heart to enter into a new profession. Mm -hmm. And the, the animals who need them are the ones that are finding them. Right. So in my case, um, I, I didn't grow up around horses. Okay. Uh, I don't understand them like I understand dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. uh, so I feel that the horse is better served working with someone who perhaps is an equestrian or who, who has been around horses forever. Sure. Uh, and, and my practice with my, my, my dog friends, my cat friends, and my people friends keeps me very busy. So yeah. I, yeah, I, when I get a call about a horse, I refer it to one of my very, very capable colleagues. Very nice. Because it shows that you are throughout the Twin Cities in certain different areas on certain days of the week. Right. So they can right. call and make an appointment that's closest to their home. Right. And also I heard that you actually did a few home visits as well. I have. I yeah. have done home visits. My practice started that way. Okay. Uh, and then as, as I, uh, the need developed, I, I established a few locations to work out of. Uh, and I will still do a home visit if it is required, if the animal is simply unable to be brought to a location. Sure. Some of the work I do is palliative care for um, animals at end of life. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a little bit more of the craniosacral work that I've been trained to do. Sure. Uh, so I will do home visits when necessary. Yeah. Yes. We had a situation with my golden retriever that we actually had to lift him, my husband and I, he was very heavy, and take him into the veterinarian and he asked if he had been hit by a car. And that would have been a prime place for you to come in and do a home visit for him as well. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. So, well, we have a few minutes left. Of course, we want to hear from you, Dr. Annie, but uh, you know, we want to hear the testimony from you. So why don't you go ahead and tell our viewers about your experience and how beneficial it's been for you and Oliver. Well, <clears throat> since going to Oliver, since, since taking Oliver to Dr. Annie, uh, he's been again uh, much more mobile. Mm -hmm. um, he we, he doesn't cry anymore. The, the pains in the morning are completely gone. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he gets up uh, usually uh, before us and, oh. and ready ready to go okay. in the morning. Uh, <laughs> oh. And uh, um, so uh, it's changed I, your life and all. It's changed both yes. our lives. Okay. And so uh, I, I would I would I would recommend uh, chiropractic care for 
more okay. animals. Very nice. And of course? Oh yeah, Oliver definitely okay. had more spring in his step after <laughs> visits with uh -huh. Annie, Dr. Uh -huh. Annie. I think, um, yeah, his walks, he was far more active. And, uh, and Max too. Max is, um, Max is always rare to go, but mm -hmm. I think that mm -hmm. uh, her presence in his life has made that more possible. Oh. So. Very beneficial for all. Yeah, and, and additional advice about diet and about uh, um, other issues that she could see in Oliver that he mm -hmm. was lacking really helped us too. So. Good. Very nice. And of course, Dr. Annie, we want to finish with you and throw out a little bit of knowledge for my viewers since you're on Knowledge for Wellness. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Well, I think we've covered the fact that uh, chiropractic works for a, a, a myriad of conditions. Uh, it, can co it can take care of, or it, it can help with uh, the typical low back pain, neck pain. Uh, my dog is having trouble getting up. He's having trouble with stairs. Those are the sorts of very typical things that we work with. Uh, but it can help ease uh, the transition into old age. Uh, it can help support basically anything that an, an animal's body is dealing with. Uh, any condition, a metabolic condition, a digestive condition, a behavioral condition. When we're dealing with those things, we really need to have our bodies tuned properly into the central nervous system so that we can support ourselves optimally. And that's what chiropractic does is make sure that we've removed any interference between the central nervous system and the body. Uh, and just one extra piece, uh, there are a number of, of very uh, capable, qualified doctors in Minnesota now. Uh, if you're looking for a doctor near you, uh, you can search Minnesota Animal Chiropractic Care or go to www.mnanimalchiro.org. Uh, there are listings there for chiropractors who are properly trained, uh, both from a veterinary background and a chiropractic background uh, that uh, deal with horses, dogs, and cats. So if you're looking for somebody near you, that's a great place to start. Well, fantastic. I want to thank you for your insight on all thank of this. You. And thank of you course, for having your testimony as well. Thank you. Thanks, Tina. Thanks so much. Thanks. If you have any questions or would like to contact Dr. Annie, please contact them at www chiropracticforeverybody.com and please tune in to my other shows of knowledge for wellness being televised throughout the Twin City area and you can also see my previous shows on YouTube and if you get a minute you can visit my website at www.knowledgeforwellness.com or you can connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and YouTube and the mission of Knowledge for Wellness is to inform viewers on health issues, to expose, educate, and make viewers aware, to enhance themselves and their loved ones for a better quality of life. And I sure hope we have provided you with more knowledge to benefit you and your loved ones. Remember, health is wealth. So until next time, be well and goodbye. Over time you've healed so much in me, and I am living proof that although my darkest